You know those stories about people helping people? Professional golf has a ton of them. And you won't believe how much these golfers give to charity. What did Phil Mickelson do with $500,000? And how did John Daly spend his first big check? These are some of the mind-blowing philanthropic gestures that have happened in golf. Golf and charity are very much intertwined. We could talk forever about all the good golf did for the fight against COVID-19. And according to the Ohio Golf Journal, golf generates $3.9 billion for charity every year. In fact, there's a chance you'll witness a fundraising tournament if you stick around long enough at your local golf course. Annually, the PGA Tour shares a handsome bundle of millions among its players. A record $415 million was promised for the 2022-23 season alone. The huge inflow of cash that allowed this has made many contest the PGA Tour's status as a nonprofit organization. Still, after all is said and done, the PGA Tour has donated more to charity than all the top sports leagues in the USA combined. Since its first donation of $10,000 in 1938, the PGA Tour's not-for-profit tournaments have donated over $3 billion. Going by that alone, it's kind of a charity, but other factors fuel the false charity status argument. But hey, this is not about the administrators. It's about the players who make it all happen. Just take a look at what the Ryder Cup does. The U.S. Ryder Cup team has been giving millions of dollars to charity since 1999. This tradition started after big shots Phil Mickelson, David Duvall, Tiger Woods, and Mark O'Mara challenged the organizers about how the event's revenue was shared. So they settled to give away their bonuses. The last U.S. Ryder Cup team gave a staggering $2.85 million to charity. Every player had $200,000, half of which went to some pre-selected organizations. While most of the team members chose to inject their money into their own charities, others like Marakawa and Scheffler shared theirs among other charities. Naturally, the biggest givers should be the biggest earners. Tiger Woods has made the largest fortune as a pro golfer, and his TGR Foundation has raised and spent millions of dollars, especially on youth education. The TGR Learning Lab in Anaheim, California reportedly cost him $18 million and has helped many underprivileged children in STEM education. According to him, it's where he hopes to direct his energy as he grows older. Tiger has had his ups and downs, and his rival Phil Mickelson has also ridden the good guy bad guy roller coaster for a while. However, the second richest golfer in the world has shown a lot of love to the needy through the Phil and Amy Mickelson Foundation. No matter what you feel about Phil, he is one of the nicest guys in golf. Remember 2006, back at Winged Foot, where he blew another chance to win the US Open? Yeah, this one. That evening, a distraught Mickelson left the venue of his loss in a hurry. But he turned his car around after remembering something. He returned to Winged Foot just to tip the locker room guys after already tipping the staff over $10,000 while he was there. A year before that, he had surprised two kids selling lemonade close to Muirfield Village. Mickelson saw the young entrepreneurs at their stand, requested a glass of lemonade, and left a $99 tip. Yeah, picture the look on their faces as he drove off after contributing to one boy's desire to build an arsenal. When he's not buying expensive lemonade, he's doing things like giving $500,000 to support students at historically black colleges and universities, or HBCUs. In 2020, he pledged half a million dollars to Jackson State University in Jackson, Mississippi. It's a little less than the 40 million he splurged on his Gulfstream 5 before selling the luxurious private jet, but it was an investment in the future of some kids who needed it. And who knows, he could have just set someone up to buy their own private jet and also help someone else tomorrow. Lefty told the 21st Prime podcast why he did it. I'm not knowledgeable. I'm not qualified to talk about race, okay? As a white male, I'll never be able to understand the challenges that black America goes through. But I want to be a part of the solution. Amen to that, Phil. You know who else should try to be part of the solution? Every one of us. If we all play our part in making the world a better place for others, Maybe we can make life more enjoyable for ourselves, too. But Phil's philanthropy didn't happen by accident. It was ignited long ago in his youth, when he was trying to find his way into the world of golf. When I was eight years old, I had a gift and a passion for the game of golf. I loved it, but I didn't have the opportunity necessarily to practice my craft. Then he spoke about a man who gave him a job at a municipal course in his early days. That gentleman took a chance on me and gave me an opportunity, and had he not, I never would have been able to play golf at the level I would have wanted. What I see is greatness in everybody, and sometimes you just need a chance. You just need an opportunity. Another player who might have inspired Phil was Cameron Champ. 
Champ's donation was dedicated to the man that showed him the beauty of golf, his grandpa, Mac Champ. About a week after Augusta National set up the Lee Elder Scholarship at Payne College, Champ did something similar at Prairie View A&M University. His foundation, alongside Chevron Corporation, donated $40,000 to sponsor one woman and a man on the school's golf teams. In a tweet replying to Golf Week's tweet about the scholarship, he said, My grandfather always wanted to go to PVAMU. Now others will get the chance in his name. There's no measure for what is achievable when we give others opportunities, and this next golfer proved it. Have you ever attended or played in a charity golf event? Tell us in the comments. It's truly crazy what disasters can do to the trajectory of our lives. It takes one mishap to throw all our plans out the window and straight into the muck. Tom Weaver, a resident of Fishers, Indiana, had just picked up golf when the PGA brought one of the biggest events on the golf calendar to his backyard. Like every golf head, Tom was excited to watch some of the people he adored play a sport he enjoyed, and he joined the gallery at Crooked Stick for the PGA Championship in 1991. But he was forced to leave the grounds after officials told everyone to seek shelter for the threatening weather during the first round. Tom, like most people, went to his car to get away from the storm. But inches from his ride, a vicious lightning rod struck him in the chest and killed him on the spot. This period of loss coincided with the announcement of a charismatic golf maverick. A day before that first round was interrupted by murderous weather, John Daly had been in Memphis. He wouldn't have been in Carmel if David Duvall didn't get a joyful message. His wife was about to have their baby on the eve of the major. The excited father withdrew from the tournament, and John Daly was called in as a ninth alternate. That means there were eight other considerations before him. As they all couldn't make it, Daly took his chance. He headed straight to Indianapolis. Seven hours later, he was in Carmel and about to play a major without a practice round. But with the help of Nick Price's caddy, Squeaky, the last man to join the competition, finished at the top of the leaderboard. Amid the whoops, congratulations, and complete disbelief, Daly had completed one of golf's greatest underdog tales. An ordinary man had done the extraordinary. But when the noise quieted and he was with his $230,000 paycheck, Daly signed a check for $30,000 to open a trust fund for the daughters of Tom Weaver, Emily, and Karen. Besides the money, Daly also gave the family a condolence call. Of course, this wasn't how Tom would have wanted his family to meet a golf champion, but that act was definitely appreciated. Time went by, and you know how the John Daly legend went. A lot of gambling, smoking, drinking, and chaos. To cut it short, it was far from rosy. But unknown to him, Tom's wife, Dee Weaver, had sought the help of a financial advisor, and his little seed had been planted wisely. Tom's older daughter Emily told ESPN in 2021, I didn't understand the magnitude of John's sacrifice at the time. I just assumed it was some guy who had gotten a big paycheck and was generous enough to give some of it to us. We were very young, and it was his first win, and he had obligations and debts. And that whole part of it I didn't know. My mom got it invested, and the funds had grown. My sister used all of it for her schooling, and I used it for what I needed to pay for school at the time. And the rest of that money is still invested. We have four kids, and it's a legacy that has been created for our family. Daly didn't contact the family again in order not to stir up any bad memories, but they finally got to thank him in 2005, after Dee's new husband reached out to him through Golf Digest. Daly arranged for them to meet at Fuzzy Zeller's charity golf event in Indianapolis, where he spent some time with the family. 30 years after the horrific passing of her husband, Dee had raised two fine women. Emily had become a respiratory therapist, and Karen, a palliative physician. About what prompted his largesse, Daly told ESPN, I just felt like I had to do something, almost a responsibility. Since I felt Tom Weaver was out on the course because of us players, and I thought in my heart it was the godsend thing to do. To the Weavers, Daly's gift was certainly godsend, and his act of kindness in that family's darkest hour will never be forgotten. If you enjoyed this video about how golf has touched lives off the course, check out the video on the screen now, or the one we posted below. We're sure you'll like that one too. See you there.